Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Mehul, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at HTTP versus WebSocket. Very two popular protocols which you use on the internet all the time without realizing. Also, if you're new here, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm creating a lot of interactive and awesome content here at CodeDam and even at CodeDam.com platform. So if you want to stay in touch, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. Let's go. So HTTP is the protocol which you always use when you're browsing websites like Google, Facebook, CodeDam, CodeDam's learning path, and basically anything which you browse on the internet which starts with HTTP or HTTPS, that is done using HTTP protocol. So let's see what exactly happens when you write google.com and press enter on the HTTP front. It's not on the DNS front, on the HTTP front. So when you write HTTP google.com, what happens is that the first thing which your browser does is that it establishes after the DNS resolution and the IP address has been figured out, is that it establishes a TCP connection between your computer, which you have here, and the server, which is owned by Google, right? So this TCP connection is also called as layer four protocol. The TCP protocol is called layer four in the OSI model. And these are just some layers of how the networking stack works, physical layer, then, you know, it goes on top and top and there are more and more abstractions. We are not gonna get into that. But what you have to understand is that this connection is duplex. So TCP connection is duplex. And after some handshakes, once it's established, then what HTTP does, is that HTTP, in this case, your computer right here, says the standard things which you see, get slash, and you know, this is the path, for example, get slash ABC, and then the HTTP headers, and this is sent to your server. Your server receives this part inside of a TCP packet and responds with the correct document. And that is it. That is all HTTP does, right? It just does this part particular communication and then closes off. So what HTTP does is that it only allows communication in a single direction. So either the client speaks and the server responds or the server speaks and the client responds. TCP on the other hand is inherently a two-way communication where both client and server can speak at the same time. Now you might think that why is that limitation for HTTP? It seems like a limitation, right? If you're going up the stack and you are kind of like losing the access to the, to the functionality of both the people talking to each other. There's a good reason for this. This is because HTTP as a protocol is stateless. So this protocol is stateless. That means every single time, every single time, if client wants to send something to the server, the client has to specify all the headers, that is the cookie header, the authentication header, whatever headers it wants, and it has to send all of them to the server. Why this is a good thing? Because this allows HTTP to stay stateless. That means you can have multiple servers at the backend handling different requests, right? So it simplifies your architecture of scaling a lot, horizontal scaling a lot, right? Because now, you can have a million clients here requesting the same page and this, all the backend has to do is add more servers in order to serve these individual requests. Why? Because after every single HTTP request, that HTTP connection gets closed. TCP connection is open if you have a keep alive header, but let's just assume for the sake of simplicity that this connection gets closed. And the next time the next request arrives, the next request is made by the client, this connection might establish to some other server, right? And because this is stateless, the other server exactly knows what the client wants. WebSockets, however, behave in a slightly different way because they actually operate much more like how TCP works in terms of dual communication. So, of course, WebSockets also works on TCP layer 4 communication, layer 4 protocol. And on top of this, sometimes what you will see is that the initial request which the server sends is an HTTP request to a WebSocket endpoint. The client sends this request, the server says that, hey, we can have a connection upgraded to WebSocket. It also asks, like, can the connection be upgraded to WebSocket? It says, yep, I can upgrade that connection to WebSocket. And once that is done, this connection is, it's not exactly dropped, but it's upgraded to a WebSocket connection. And this WebSocket connection right here is awesome. Why? Because this, actually is a dual channel established between the client and the server. So how you can imagine this? You can imagine this in the following way that this has actually called, you know, I'm just trying to draw a simple mobile phone. This has actually called this server right here. So both of them are now on a phone call. 
where they pretty much can say whatever they want to each other any time of the day. How does this differ from PC uh, from your HTTP? It differs in the sense that your HTTP connection is more like sending a letter, which probably the symbol would for letter also would seem seem the same, but I'm just writing a L here. So you send a letter once, then the server reads it, then the server responds with another letter and that's it. The connection then closes, right? For the next time, the client has to again initiate the connection or the server can as well if it knows the IP, then in that case, server becomes the client, but you get the idea. So this is just like a one-time transaction which is happening here. But a major fault which you will observe here is that we lose that scalability aspect which we talked in the last video, right? Because now, if this client starts sending a thousand messages, then only this server has to handle it. Why? Because they are on a phone call, right? So it cannot really drop the connection because if it do that, then it pretty much will, you know, just drop the connection here and the client will see that, hey, the connection has been lost and the state has been lost for the most part because, because this is a single connection now, this connection is stateful. That means it's not that on every single message, this client has to tell who the client is, right? That authentication phase only happens when there is a handshake going on for the very first time. After the handshake is complete, this is a stateful connection. To put this thing in another way, your client establishes a TCP connection. Once that is established, then your client establishes an HTTP connection and tries to upgrade the socket to upgrade the connection to WebSocket. Once that has happened, then this connection is upgraded to a stateful connection right here, right? Now it can send some messages, it can send some messages at any single time. This has the drawback that you cannot use multiple servers to handle multiple messages because this channel is already established and is long running, right? This problem does not happen in case of HTTP because you can have multiple servers and all it is doing is just handling this one single request and that's it, then it's closed. Then for the next request, another channel opens up, right? And then that happens. So it seems like WebSockets is fundamentally not horizontally scalable because you will always have this problem where a server is stuck with a client, right? And that is partly true, but there are very interesting solutions like AWS API Gateway, which allows you to address certain problems. And we will definitely see how we can scale WebSocket connections in some further videos. But I hope this gave you an understanding of how WebSockets differ from HTTP. There are some obvious differences as well. For example, HTTP is definitely slower because you are transferring a lot more data in every single request compared to WebSockets. WebSockets are long living, therefore they are obviously faster as well because it's like on a phone call, this is more like sending a letter or maybe like, you know, just giving a ring and then or sending a text message, for example. But yeah, I mean, both have their own pros and cons, right? So it's it's not like one is perfect for a single job. It depends on what you want to do. So yeah, that's pretty much it for WebSockets versus HTTP. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and this video format in general. I hope this video was able to provide you some value. If it did, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon.